Everybody, it's Mr. Gus, and I'm back in the physics classroom. Today, we're talking about our wrap-up from our, uh, our class incline challenge lab, our lab practical. So if you don't remember or didn't watch the previous video or weren't in class, here's what it looked like. We had a long incline that went down uh, a 2 by 4 and eventually it flattened off at a table. And the table was here, the 2 by 4 was resting on the table with this curve, and there was a horizontal launch, and we were predicting where this car was going to land inside uh, a bin. We put a bin on the ground, and the first time we did it, uh, we took some measurements kind of quickly at the end of class, we, we figured out the process, and the first time we did it, we ended up here. We ended up way short, and we were like, okay, so, Let's think about our design. Let's think about the tools we use to measure. How can we improve this? So we went ahead and we, we straightened the track and we went ahead and we took different measurements. We, we took more precise measurements and we talked specifically about the two groups. We had the group that was doing the physics on the incline and the group that was doing the physics on the flat surface. And they got their heads together and said, okay, maybe we should make sure that we measure exactly the same spot. So what we ended up doing was the group that was in charge of the incline decided to measure from the top all the way until we got to the flat surface. This was their incline physics. So I'm going to call it that, uh, give it a name, incline physics. That's what took place over here. Our group decided incline physics was responsible with everything that wasn't flat. That's, and that includes our, our distance, our delta x. Uh, our acceleration, the angle, everything they were in charge of this section. Now, the uh, group two, we can talk about flat physics was group two. They were in charge as soon as this track went flat, they were in charge of this, and then the kinematics group was in charge of everything after that. They were in charge of, of, of the horizontal launch problems. They didn't really change much except the measurements they got passed along from the previous two groups. So we go ahead and we try this again, right? We try this again, and what we actually see is we get a smaller number. It, it actually comes out smaller than it was before. We end up seeing that, like, it falls even shorter. So we can go back and analyze this again and say, okay, maybe the flat physics needs to be over here. And all this craziness, right? We can do this all over and over and over again. But more importantly, was after all that discussion, as a class, we sat down and said, okay, what are the issues here? Uh, is it our measurements? Well, no, we, we were pretty careful with our measurements. We used plumb bobs to get, you know, the, the vertical uh, zero point. We measured these very well. We had a, a lot of uh, coefficient of friction data, and we averaged that, so it probably wasn't error, or if there was error in that measurement, it was taken care of by the, by the averaging of that, uh, that data. So what we landed on was that we don't actually have two sections of physics here. We have this inclined physics, we have this flat physics, and we have this like, like curvy physics. We can call it that. Curvy physics, where it's not an angle. It's like a changing angle. There's this like, woo, this changing angle. And we're not sure what happens there. We're not sure why that section is causing issues, but we know it's not the incline and we know it's not flat physics. We know this to be true. So we thought about learning what's happening there. And so we have our FBDs. We have the FBD for, for the incline, force gravity, force normal, Force friction down here, force gravity, force normal, those are equal now, and force of friction. So I want you to think on a few things. Pause this video. I'm going to give you a few things to think about. First question about this curvy physics is friction constant here. Number one is, is friction constant here. Number two is do other forces change here? These are two big questions. You can pause it, you can think about it, you can write these things down. So go ahead and do that. Pause, think about this, draw a picture. Go ahead and, and try to think about this. So pause that right now and think about this. If 
you're coming back from a pause, it's great. I hope you have these things here. What we want to really analyze here is what forces are taking place through that curve. Now, we talked about roller coasters in class, right? This is essentially a roller coaster, a giant drop with this curvy physics. And I ask you at home to think about what does this feel like? What does it feel like to go through that curve? How do you feel? And like, I can't put it into words. I cannot put into words what this section feels like. All I can do is kind of just make the motion with my body. I know if I'm on a, 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 a roller coaster at Six Flags and I go down that incline, as I reach the bottom of that, I can't describe what it feels like. I can just go like, oh, that's, that, that's the feeling you feel. You feel this like, woo, feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like your gut drops, your whole body gets pushed down. And so I have to ask myself, what force is causing that? What force causes me to feel that ah, force? So let's draw it. Let's see. If I'm coming down the ramp right here, what forces exist? What are forces that are on me? What is the ah, force? A lot of people think it's this. A lot of people want to say gravity. Gravity pushes down on me harder and harder. We got to think on that for a minute. And we know this not to be true. We know in our physics brains that Fg equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity 9.8. This is weight. My weight does not change on a roller coaster. I do not lose mass. The earth does not change. The force of gravity does not change on me. This is where it gets really weird. It's not that gravity pulls down harder. It's that the other forces acting on me actually get greater. It's the track. It's the roller coaster seat. That force, that normal force, pushes upward on me. It's not that my head and my stomach are pushing down ugh, to make that feeling on the roller coaster. It's that the roller coaster itself is pushing up on me harder. I'm not getting pulled down more. I'm getting pushed up more. My weight wants to carry me down, but the track is pushing me up. And so what I see is actually an increase in my normal force. This increase in my normal force, this upward pushing force, crunches my body down. That's wild to think about. That the, it's not a downward force, it's an upward force that crunches me through this turn. This is why this curvy physics throws off all of our measurements. Because normal force is responsible for friction. We know that friction kinetic is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. If that normal force increases, so does friction. If friction increases beyond what it is in the flat physics and what it is in the incline physics, then this curvy section is going to be slowing us down much, much, much more than our flat physics. That should hopefully explain why we see falling short. It should make sense to us. This upward normal force is responsible for an increase in friction. It's responsible for that feeling of and it's responsible for us failing in our incline challenge lab. So we've learned a little bit more about normal force and its impact on friction. Uh, what I want us to do now is head over and we'll start working on our elevator problems from class today. And we can learn more about how normal force is actually responsible for a lot of accelerations we see in our daily lives, not just jumping on a scale and measuring my weight. Till then, see ya!